Press. Wow. They actually get the kill with soul assumption. Now arrow walking in, Pylai die. He's in a world of hurt. He's gonna fall. <clears throat> and they will deny the tower. So that's what they needed to hide. Yeah, but they did a good job. Lim did a good job about keeping him on the cliff there, but also keeping his distance too, because even though he went on him, he could still die. Black, we'll see if Eric can do something here. No initiation. Black is wow. gonna fall and Bulba runs in, but now here comes Koifa as well. Limp and the rest of NIP getting low. It is a two for one. Eric can run away. There is the blotting light. Black does buy back. Hanskin now on the cliff gets Requiem, but there were not really any souls up for Koifa. Now he's got them. Jonas the fan's going to walk back in. Koifa knows he can blink, but he actually gets it up. And now Jonas the fan getting stunned up by the Centaur. No detection. G2A.com, the best video game store ever! Fast as lightning, solid as a rock, cheap as duck! What's more, you can sell on it because it's also a marketplace! Remember G2A.com, the best video game store ever! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dota Pit League season number three group stages. We're here in group A, our second game in the series of Team Arena, Tank Arena versus Ninjas in Pajamas. This two game series about to come to a close. Well, we're going to start out with a draft first, but so far we've had some really great games today. Vega versus MYI was earlier. Pretty quick series left for a lot of room between, of course, uh, this series and the first. But now the series is now getting underway. And uh, game number two hopes to be a bit better for NIP after a pretty shaky start. And uh, they stayed in it, but really just a really great draft from Team Tinker. Uh, they were able to come out on top 30k net worth lead, probably more by the end of the game. And uh, we'll see how things turn out. As always, again, my name is Mott, joined by Pimp Muckle, our production manager. Quantum is our stats man standing in for Mott Packs. And of course, Tralf is here as well. Tralf, what's up, man? How's it going? Um, yeah, pretty fun game to watch. Thought it was going to be over in a matter of like 15 minutes, but Nip really kept him in the game with a cool strat. Yeah, this is... Uh... Nip had that minion strategy that, that worked pretty well for them, although I think a lot of the, the problems stemmed from maybe their laning setup. Uh, first and foremost, the Batrider mid, instead of having him in the off lane and then taking the jungle, he probably could have had a quicker blink dagger. They probably could have had somebody mid that could have done a bit better than against the Drow Ranger. Um, they took some very good fights around Roshan. They had some really good pushes. But in the end, uh, that fifth pick brood wasn't enough. And they do go for the first pick Troll Warlord. And they grab the Chen as well. Which is, I believe, played by Hanskin. And he plays a great Chen. So this is a good start. Chen is, is usually a top tier ban priority in this patch because of his change to his... Uh, Holy Persuasion and, te uh, excuse me, um, t Hand of God in the Aghanim Scepter. So I'm a big fan of the start, not only from Ninjas and Pajamas, but from Team Tinker as well. Yeah, it's cool to see Chen picked up uh, again. I mean, we see it either pe teams just not comfortable with it, not going for it altogether. Then you see other teams that run all the time when they can, like Team Secret, and it gets banned out against those top teams. So it's cool to see it being played once again. Troll Warlord, I... 
I'm sick of this hero. I see it all the time. <laughs> but it's picked up here for ninjas and pajamas. Uh, troll pickers and sniper pickers in ranked can burn in hell. Uh, you can all go die, in my opinion. Uh, I understand that you need to win the game. Careful what you say. It'll be on Reddit. Okay? Yeah, that's true. All right. That's a good point. My, I'm sorry. Uh, don't go die, but please stay out of my games. Would like, uh, would like very much if you did that. Uh, troll, pretty, pretty good hero. Sniper could be dealt with by like a clockwork or a spirit breaker. Uh, troll and ranked is seemingly unstoppable if you are smart enough to know how to play troll, which is pretty simple. You hit your W button and then you hit your R button to hit towers, and uh, it's just that's how it goes. Big fan of the hero. Good stuff. <laughs> Brood's actually banned up by Nip themselves. Um, yeah, I could talk about last game, but uh, nah, not going to. Why not? <laughs> or or why, why should I? We should just talk about this game. So, All right, Brood banned out for them. Uh, Lena banned out from Team Marino Tinkerino. Um, I'm wondering if they were... I'm wondering what they want for mid then, because I usually don't ban out a Lena if you're anticipating it to be a support Lena. Mm -hmm. It's also not... You know, I said once before that Lena's not a good solo support as far as like being being on her own when Chen's like farming the jungle. And then I said that, and then like some team did it, and they absolutely owned with it with Chen and then Lena as a solo support. So uh, maybe it is effective. Bristleback picked up yet again this time from Team Tinker, which is interesting that the, actually Nip led it in the pool because if there is a hero out there that's actually not too bad against Troll, it's Bristleback. Um, and they let it go. They, they banned actually the Brood and the uh, Dazzle over the Bristleback. So I find that a little bit interesting. They're going to go with the Witch Doctor, which is... I, I've seen this before, and I saw EG do this, and it didn't work out. Um, where they picked the Witch Doctor, which is a fantastic support, don't get me wrong. But to be the solo support uh, offside of Chen. The only thing is, is like I feel like Witch Doctor's Axe Upgrade is so good on the support. One of the best, if not the best, in the game. Mm. It's it single-handedly turn team fight that it I I feel like not giving him farm is kind of wasting the hero's potential. I saw EG do this at I don't remember what when they did this, but I, it just didn't work out well. Where the witch doctor had absolutely no farm. I think it was against Void Boys actually in the MLG. Um and they and the Witch Doctor just couldn't get any farm and couldn't do anything with the axe or with his ulti, so that's my only gripe about this combo right now with the Chen Witch Doctor. So would you rather, like, say, a Skyrath in this situation, or somebody sure. with a reliable stun, maybe Avenge? I mean, the, the most popular DAC when Secret was kind of putting forth this Chen strat was uh, Rubik. Rubik, Because yeah. Rubik is really good by just being on his own. Um, you know, he's got a good solid setup, he can harass nicely, and things like that. So, Rubik, um, other kind of heroes are, like you mentioned, Skyrath can hold his own. I mean, Witch Doctor can hold his own too. I, I think that's fine. That's not the issue. The issue, I think, is that, you know, his axe upgrade is so damn good that it kind of warrants making sure he gets it no matter what. But because you have a Chen, that's just not going to happen. Yeah, it, it's going to take some time, if it happens at all, this game for an IP. And that'll be their two supports. Can we have Team Taker go for the the old school Crystal Maiden? Hopefully they have the Arcana and uh, or Arcana, however you, you want to pronounce it. But uh, CM seems pretty good. Two decent supports from the CM and the Lion. The Axe in the safe lane for Black. Black Axe is something I haven't seen in a while. I'm I'm a big fan. If uh, you fan of that Black Axe, yeah, Black Axe. Yes, I am a fan of that Black Axe shelf. Trust me, <laughs> it's great. Uh, on a scale of one to Mott, how mad are you at Troll Pickers? Hmm. Well. I mean, I got tweeted about it, Pimp. It is my business now. I'm pretty mad. That's how I'm, I'm Mott Dota mad. Let's go. NIP have a pick coming out. They have... Let's see. Probably mid later on or off later here. Um, I'm not sure what you go for as an off later in this situation. Well, or... I was gonna say clock, but you know, you just you never know. Something. Oh yeah, yeah, you're gonna say clock. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, listen, man, <laughs> I've played a lot of clock recently. I'm a big fan of the hero, and also this hero seen such a resurgence. Yeah, I am a fan of the clock as well. All right. Fan of the clock and the black axe. Okay. That's very true. That's a hundred percent right, and I hope you guys have nothing wrong with that. <laughs> um. Right. All right, clock. So, yeah, pretty good hero. I mean, it's a, it's a more popular offlane hero in this meta, I would say. So. 
Yes. It's going to give also some initiative. Like anytime you have a somewhat pu uh, some kind of pushing strat in mind, like Troll Chen is a very strong push. It's important that you make sure you also draft yourself initiation. That's the one fault that you can kind of run into, and Clockwork uh, remedies that problem. So. And the Clockwork. He's also been picked a lot recently because of Sniper and and how good that hero has been, um, and and a way to close the distance between a Sniper and a and a Clockwork is to easily just hook shot him. His Spirit Break has been popular as well, but that was the first ban from N NIP, and, and rightly so. I think the hero deserves the first ban. But as the, the draft progresses further, I, I have to imagine that this is going to be an off lane Bristle back in a safe lane's axe, and then maybe a mid lane Medusa for Quikva. That seems the most likely, because I believe, I think Black plays Dusa as well, but I've seen Quikva play it most often. Um... And that's a hero I think he enjoys playing. So they have a lot of this early game potential with the first four heroes they draft. Almost four protect one style, and then they have NIP. Um, but I was actually, I was I was talking about this the other day. I was watching you play Dusa in an NEL game. You were going against Grant Mid. Mm -hmm. um, I and I was, him. Yeah, I mean, that was a but matchup that... Yeah, I mean, you crushed the matchup. Yeah, you guys lost, but you... It was kind of surprising how strong Dusa was early on in the game. You had no problem CSing with a Wraith Band early on in the game. Your damage was there, um, and I think it, it like Medusa mid is is not a is not a bad choice, well, especially because there's no Lena or SF to deal with. Yeah, well, last pick Medusa is, is much stronger than picking him up front because then it gives uh, the other team only one response to a counter. And if they were last pick, like total last pick, they would have no counter to it, which is where last pick or first pick in general on a, on a side can be very, very devastating. Uh, people talk about how first pick is very strong. I think it's more of the last pick that the first pick gives you, if that makes sense. Yes. Uh, because if, if you have something in mind and say, you know, you draft a, an anti-mage in the end and they have absolutely no counter to it, there, there's nothing that they can do. It can just totally win you the game right off that last pick. So... Uh, in this case, they pick a Luna, which isn't exactly here. You're like, yeah, Luna versus Medusa. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's Luna with Chen is pretty nice. They have a lot of push in general. So it's going to be a troll in the mid lane. Like I said, tons of push with Chen, Luna, extra damage from her passive, um, you know, the ulti from troll, and then making sure that they have that initiation. This is, this is a very nice, like, well-balanced lineup from Nip. I would say more of a meta draft from Team Tinker with the Axe and the Lion. And yep, it will be that black axe in the yes. bottom lane. Yeah, he. he or, is, sorry, top lane. He is going ham on many occasions. The last time I remember watching was at the summit uh, when he played. I think for no, actually, it might have been at the TI four qualifiers. Is the last time I saw it or observed it or cast it personally. But I've seen it a lot. Uh, I'm pretty. I'm a pretty big fan. He's gonna head top with a giant whatever the hell this thing is. Wyvern guard edge. There's that. Um. Also, I want to I want to say the reason why you lost that game was not because you know uh, anything to do with you is the fact that you guys picked Medusa into a PL. Yeah. I, last picked Medusa into a third pick PL. What yeah, the hell is I, that? I I don't know who was the drafter in that situation, but uh, Carson. I think Dota Master. Or I forget who was the the PL in that that game, but yeah. Way. Anyway, uh, Boba coming down here trying to place a ward. He actually gets it off, and it's going to block the. Um, Connect camp. He gets down there really fast too, and I don't know that they saw this, but also this is kind of a nice spot because most of the time the ward is placed like right here. Yep. Um, and so if you want to deward it effectively, usually it's placed down in the river. But if they place it too far down, it might actually be out of range. So that's something to keep in mind when they, uh, if they, you know, ferry out some sentries here. Well, this or... block this camp. No, I don't think so. Right? It'll just block this one. Yeah, that that one only blocks this camp. They That's what I mean. A, they could place a sentry here, and it'll counter this, but I don't know if they put that sentry down. Well, that's what I'm saying. They usually will place the sentry, like, over here. Yeah. Um, so when, when, when they realize that that camp is blocked. But I'm saying if they if they place it too far up, there's a chance oh, yeah, 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 that okay, it actually yeah. is too far All right, I away. Get, I get what you're saying now. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But we'll, well see. We'll see if that comes into play. Maybe they just get it right. Uh, but Whoa. anyway, like you mentioned, it's going to be the Medusa being played by Koik from mid. Way 2, that's the second time Way 2's tried to block, but it's not really been the most impressive block. I was going to mention that last game, but um, it didn't really matter too much. Limp. Ooh. He, did he go for the bounty? He did. Okay, so he's got almost level 2. So Troll versus Deuce a matchup, and this is a matchup I, I I would be kind of a bit skeptical about, at least on Koik for Zen. This could be difficult. He's doing a very good job pulling the wave back towards his tower. 
which means he's not really in harm's way. He's taking all of the aggro from the creep wave and using it to his advantage, and he'll actually get a couple of CS out of it as well. So, by, by the way, I wanted to point out, Silkin actually went for a full null talisman early on in the game. He really wants right-click to harass Bulba, and boy, did he. He did harass Bulba. Chen doesn't have money to buy sentries. Now he does. I'm not sure if he saw that camp was warded or not, but mm -hmm. uh, he'll, I don't know if he needs to head over there anytime soon. Black will farm top. He'll actually just take the creep wave entirely. Jonas and Fan will push it back with the cogs and... For now, yeah. we'll, everything will just be even, looks like. No, this is, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> this is really smart. And I first saw this done when people were picking Skyrath as a solo support with, an, with a jungler. Just because Skyrath benefits a little bit more from the extra int that the uh, Null Talisman gives you with your, with your Arcane Bolt or whatever it's called. But this is smarter than Boots because Boots don't really help you zone. Like, Boots just make you faster and help you go from place to place, which can be good. But as far as helping you actually zone, it doesn't give you more damage. Whereas the Null Talisman gives you a lot more damage, actually. So um, it gives you actually for the... In this case, for an hero, it gives you an extra 9 damage. It's really, really effective. And as you mentioned, he's totally zoned out Bulba. He's only got level um, 1.5. One. Yeah. He's going to stack for himself, but he won't be able to do those for quite some time. Call's going to go. A couple of counter helix blocks. Actually, only gets the 1, luckily enough, for Jonas on fan. Otherwise, could have taken a lot of damage. Might have had to back. Um, who has only two tangos left, and he is getting kind of close to that, that bottle. But Pilot Eye picks up an Invis rune, which I think they saw in that top rune spot. So Limp is backing up. He's using his uh, ranged axes, and Pilot Eye will instead now rotate down towards bottom. But top lane, they actually cog up, and Black still doesn't matter. So Yonasa fan is going to get called up, and... He's going to get some Helix Prox. One right clicks to do the job. Black can't dive any further. He's going to go down. Actually sticks up, stays alive. Falls to Yonas and Fan for the first blood. How he's did that happen? Wow. He's actually so unlucky, man. I feel really bad for Black. There was like five things attacking him. The whole Creep Wave and uh, Jonas and Fan. Or Jonas and Fan. And he didn't sp he's, I think he spun at the very beginning and then yeah. nothing. Got nothing. I feel really bad for Black. In any other situation, that is a easy kill and easy first blood for Black. But Jonas and Fan, Ice Frog is on his side. Ice Frog, please. And uh, that is going to provide him not only boots of speed, but he will get his bottle within five gold. Quick for mid lane takes a whirling axes. Quick for sitting at 12 CS, limp at uh, 14. Pretty even all things considered. The Luna has 21 CS down in this bottom lane. And when you think of Luna, this hero doesn't have the best time early on. She's kind of squishy. She doesn't provide that much damage. But later on, she's just as much of a beast as she used to be uh, back in the day, although agility game was stifled a bit. Oh, this skin is really cool, too. Or the whatever you call it. It's Luna Rider or the horse or... Uh, we're not a horse. The I, don't, I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. Mount, mount. mount. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you, Pimlico. Um... Yeah, the mount's pretty... <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, I just woke up seriously an hour ago. I'm still uh, not all there. <laughs> but bottom river, I still like horse. <laughs> I saw a lot of coddle, okay? Regen rune picked up, pilot die, being annoying, but... Yeah, I, it was really... It's hard because oh, well, bottom lane... Bulb is dead. Aggression. Bulb is dead, yep. Wow, fast start for NIP, but yeah. It's a level 2 maledict too, so I've been seeing a lot more witch doctors go for this. Um, it's just extra damage, whereas, you know, the heal is nice, but as far as outputting damage and getting right, kills... Top lane black, you've got it this time, buddy. The spins now gets the call off, finally. Should get the kill here, and it actually gets a couple creeps as well. Finally, the redemption coming out for black. And boy, he's not even backing up, he just wants the CS. Now he'll, he'll uh, back up and, and eat a tree or two, and Pilot Eye might even come to help him out a bit, but it looks like he's, he should just regen up from Tranquil Boots and he'll be fine. Yeah, he definitely deserves that kill. Totally does. And even though Giannis uh, fan has a good start and he's level 5, which is great, had first blood, he's only got 4 CS, so... Yes, he had that great start, which he shouldn't have had, but he's not farming out of control. It's not like he's winning lane or anything like that. He just got no. a little bit lucky. But now the thing is, when he gets level 6, I find that as a clockwork, your main source of income is going to be through Hookshot to get to that, say, mm -hmm. uh, Blade Nail, which I imagine is what he goes for next. Um, and then at that point, you're, you're, you're set as long as you just keep hitting hook shots. So it really comes down to your first couple of hooks for Jonas and fan. And so far he's getting close to six. He's going to have it soon. Black, uh, kind of fakes out a call, cancels the animation. Uh, Black should have a decently timed blink dagger, even though he did lose out on that, the first blood. 
What else is happening in the game? I think Chen is ready to smoke up as he has a couple of creeps. I'm surprised he didn't do it earlier. But it looks like he might head mid and try to catch out quick for them. Hmm. Maybe not. Um, yeah, so he's got three creeps. Uh, there's going to be a rune spawning bottom. Limp. He doesn't have his face boots up just yet. He's got 27 CS compared to the 29 of Koikva. So I don't know if he's been having some help. Oh, there's a hook shot actually on the top. It's going to be on way two. Gets the Crystal Nova off. That's a support kill. It's a haste through. Notice the fan should live through through this because he can just run so fast. Ooh. Rolling axes swing and a miss from Limp. And uh, Tinker will try to run. Earth Spike, Hex first onto Jonas and Fan. Earth Spike, there's three heroes chasing Pilot Die down. Cogs will go, actually blocks up the axe. Earth Spike onto two, the Stone Gaze. He gets him. Black's gonna run in. He's got call. Can he get it off? He gets only Jonas and Fan. They kill uh, Pilot Die with the flare, by the way. Now Black getting body blocked. There's the Thunderclap. He's about to go down. Was about to get the Coin Blade off, but Lip gets the kill first and foremost. And that is now a 5 to 1 kill lead coming out for NIP plus the safe lane Luna farming up a storm. Well, actually, she's not because she TP top for no reason. No. Uh, maybe maybe they can push top and make this TP useful, but that's actually clearing up some space for the level 2 Bristleback. I'm surprised he just didn't sit bottom and completely shut down the Bristleback even harder. So kind of a missed TP from error, I think. Un unless they get this tower, then it'll make it up or make it worth it. Um, but we'll see though. If if I'm Team Tinker, I sh I would definitely want to defend this um, and get multiple people to TP up here and do so. But we'll see. It doesn't look like they're doing so right now. Hanskin, he has level five. They're putting more TPs up here to really secure this tower. So they're trying to make use of this TP from Error. Oh, and bottom I, lane. Like There's uh, Jonas and Fan jumping in. Pilot Eye there to help out. Bulba can't do much. Flare's going to go through. Hookshot available for Jonas and Fan. He's ready to go on Bulba. Cancels it. Hits Bulba with it. Gets the right click. Gets the double kill. Jonas and Fan is popping off. He's fueled himself and now gets a double <laughs> kill. Is dominating after those couple of kills in the mid lane. Or, well, top rune spot. He's going in. And they did get the tower top, so the TP from Arrow was very, very useful. They didn't put any defense up there, and... Man, I mean, I, I thought that Jonas, or Jonas and Fan would have gotten, like, toned down a little bit after that death from uh, Axe. But nope, just some really nice movement. That, that hook shot up in the top rune just really started to get the ball rolling. And look, they're putting pressure on this tier 2 tower up top now. Uh oh Pilot Eye. I think he's maybe dead. Whirling Axes are going to come in and... Gets the X off into Era. Earth Splash Era has whips. An ulti. Uh, Black's about to run in. They get the ulti off, and Black just falls. Oh. Quickfa <laughs> dies as well. Ice Frog with the RG from these Lucid Beam procs. And boy, are they doing work. Bubba's going to walk right in. Four to one. And as as hard as Team Tigger won that first game, and that's as hard as they're losing the second game. They have one kill on the board. There is about to be a 7,500 and maybe almost 10K net worth lead at nine minutes into this game. NIP are turning the Jets on. Oh my god, this is a complete unmitigated disaster coming out. Um, I, I don't know what Koikva thought. I thought maybe he maybe he thought that the ult from Luna was on cooldown or something, but he just ran right into that. Uh, Axe was trying to call people and, and I think maybe get it off before Luna was able to cast a spell, but yep, there, this is the push I talked about, man. And the great thing about this, too, is like, like I said, it's a very well and balanced lineup. They have tons of push, they have tons of good laning phase heroes, like Luna and Witch Doctor, very, very strong in laning phase. Uh, Clockwork won his lane when he really shouldn't have. I mean, that was, that was really, really hard for Black. And they also have initiation with the clockwork. So they got push, they got initiation, they got damage, they got late game, they got everything. Yeah, and they have the snowball to top it all off. They have the the blade mill now for the clockwork. They're getting items that uh, are really going to help them through this mid to, to the late game. The helm of the dominator for air to farm more. He'll probably get a Yasha soon. And then maybe a BKB. Trolls working on the tier one tower alone and doing a lot of work in the process. Going for drum on Troll, which is an interesting choice. Phase, Bottle, Drum. And there's like one standard build for Troll Warlord, but he's in the middle lane, so I guess he decides to go for something else completely different. Instead of going for the Coin Blade Morbid Mask, they don't need him to actually, you know, do the Roshan. They're able to do it on their own. And with that, they get now Seal Kit, Arcane Boots. Hanskin has a full mech. And this uh, the Snowball isn't stopping anytime soon. This is now be gonna, gonna become a couple of Tier 1 Towers, or well, at least this Tier 1 Tower. Yep, 
and um, <laughs> the uh, I think the drums is just more of like it's gonna help the team, like the the actual aura that it's gonna give you and your teammate when you're grouping up this heavily at this early stage of the game. It's gonna benefit more than getting something like life steal. They don't really need the life steal on them. They just need stats. And the, the extra jump charges with the six of them now is gonna help them in these team fights a little bit more. So look at this. All these towers are gonna be gone. I don't know what they do. I don't think they have enough high ground defense either. Uh, they don't even they don't even have a blink on axe yet. I'm so surprised about that fact. And that's a lot because a lot of the fact is, oh, in the end oh stack God. as well, Bulba worked so hard on this. This was his pride and joy in the early game, and it is now going completely and entirely to NIP without mercy. They have an army at their disposal. Ayasha is now completed up for Era. They will have Limp having his full drums plus 1,400 gold, and... And there's nothing for Tinker. And I mean, yeah, you have late game with Koikva, but that, that's going to take 30, 20 to 30 minutes for him to become a factor at all, I feel like. And again, Black is supposed to be, you know, he's supposed to be the buffer between that late game and what they have now. And they will catch the hook shot. Hook but he's going to mana shield. He can stone gaze as well. Now he's out of mana. Uh, Yona some fan actually can't get the kill. But still, we'll chase him down. Flare's up at six. They'll continue to chase Quake, but he'll bottle up. Whirling Axe's TP's gonna come through. Bash! Don't even need it. They get the kill regardless, and... Just one of those games for Team Taker, it feels like. It's just a really nice draft from Nip, man. I, I imagine there's the blink being shown by Black. Not a lot of damage coming out, though, and Era, he's trying to wiggle his way around. He does have an Aegis anyway. There's the ultimate coming out. The Lucent Beams are hitting nicely. Pink Panda trying to get away, and he will get away for the time being. Uh, I see, actually, Limp. He's going to ulti and go on the Bristleback. This actually should be game. I don't know. The, yeah. Oh, I thought that was actually going to be a GG, but this yeah, is Tango yeah. Shared. Tango Shared. <laughs> uh, there's nothing they can do. They just showed their Blink Axe call. Medusa doesn't have an ulti. She's a, absolutely no farm. This game is over, man. How does... How does it go from Team Ticker having a fantastic first game to this poor of a game number two? I don't know what happened, but... Um, draft. I, like, Nip's draft is close to flawless, I think, in this game. Like, I really, really like their draft. It just They have everything going for them, and... I mean, a lot of that, yes, has to do with uh, top lane, but I think that even with a fast blink on Axe, it wouldn't have really mattered. But the thing that really helped him snowball was the clockwork having such a good time, like you mentioned. Yeah. That, it, it was really that top hook up on the top rune that really started the, the whole thing. He, he got the kill on the way to, he grabbed the haste rune, he ran around, kited the Medusa, they got a kill onto the, I think, someone else, the lion, and then someone else after that. Yeah. And Bristleback, in the meantime, all of this, when Eric TP'd up to the fight late, he TP'd up very late, Bristleback was still level two at that time. Yeah. Like two and a half, it wasn't even level three yet, so. They just shut oh. down and won all lanes. He canceled his call, he should've used it there. Now he might use it on the limp, but that's not the best hero to, to call if you're an ax, and yeah. Limp is gonna blow him up with actually the Chen getting the kill with his creeps, and, and if your team taker, you have to back up now. You're down a full set of racks. I think that offlet was also a huge disaster, and I have to I have to credit Seal Kid for getting that early null talisman because yeah. he was at 64 damage, and a level one bristleback who goes quill spray first will not be able to stand in lane at all. There's just no way. He wasn't able to get close to the wave. He was not able to get close to the experience. Chen gets absolute free farm regardless of Lucidity Camp. Bulba's gonna get uh, caught out now and level two Bristleback. He's not even level six yet for God's sakes. Doesn't have Warpath, so he can't speed away with those stacks of his ultimate. Might actually get it here with a creep or two, but I, yeah. I think you just, if unless, unless there is some miraculous throw, and unless NIP throw five bodies randomly at the base and proceed to just do nothing, I don't really see how Team Tinker can get back into this one. At this point, it's just about trying to stay alive as long as possible and see what Koikva can do. Yep, and uh, I think Silk is going to try to go for a solo kill here or something on Axe. But um, also keep in mind when Seal Kid was like doing some harassing things to that Bristleback, if he's in 900 radius of that, that aura from Luna, it also buffs his damage. Yep. So on top of the, all the damage that he does himself with the right clicks and the Null Talisman, um, he does even more because of the lunar, uh, the lunar blessing. Something to keep in mind there. No, you're absolutely right. And uh, by the way, speaking of the Luna, she has a Mantisal now. 
So this is the road. This is where Godzilla Luna beca uh, becomes effective and becomes a thing. Pilot Eye will find Luna, but he, he's actually got to find uh, a coffin instead is, is really what he's finding. Lucian Beam will finish him off and make a kill going for Era. So at this point, they'll group up. They will go for the tier three bottom. Uh, Roshan will respawn in three minutes, if not more. And NIP proceeds to just parade down bottom lane. And it feels like a parade at this point as... There's just nothing. There's absolutely nothing on the side of Team Tinker. You look at the item chart, the F5 button, you, you see what's up. Black has the blink dagger, and then there's like point boosters on the rating side. There's drums, there's mechs, there's Vlads, there's Helms of the Dominator, there's Blade Mill. Look at everything they have for teamfight too now. They got the aura from Luna, they got the ultimate from Troll, they got this wolf creep, the awful wolf for extra damage. They got uh, the drums to help them out with the pops of charge. They have like, uh, just everything. They got so much damage for pushing. And they look at these two, these two tornadoes too. It's so annoying. Black, he, he's maybe gonna try to find some kind of opening, but he can't. Can't, Because if he gets too close to those glaives, he's gonna stop his blink. And the tornado as well. And the positioning from NIP is sublime at this point. They back and up and... There's always the threat of this hook too. Yeah, exactly. This hook shot is, is also, yeah, like you said, Nusi. He was clearing out the middle, creep waving. The two tornadoes up there, it's like Twister for God's sakes. All they really need to do is just wait at this point and pick the next time to go. Maybe with the next creep wave, maybe do the next Roshan, maybe with another item. Olymp has 3k gold. What else? Uh, Luna has 3k gold, so she could go for. If she wants to be really safe, she can go for BKB. She could still get called, but uh, BKB might be an okay option against Pylai Die. Black Mike had jumped on. Drum charge is used. Limp runs in, gets hexed up. Hookshot goes. Cogs onto two. Call goes in only onto the Chen groups. Pilot Eye gets blown up. Bulba, the Death Lord coming through. Now Black going to fall as well. Three GD. dead, and that is it. GG, 17 minutes in. And today has been a day of early GGs, with the exception of that first game between Tinker and NIP. NIP even up the series with some of the best positioning. A great draft and beautiful play. NIP take game number two and they move up to four and two here in Dota Pit season number three. This was just an actual stomp, like a complete stomp. Everything went wrong. I can't even say everything went wrong. They just got outplayed and I, I didn't I don't really necessarily want to call it an out draft because I don't think that Tinker's lineup was terrible. I just think Nips was really, really strong. Like the Chen, Chen Luna is really, really good. I, I'm wondering if we're going to see a comeback of that combo. It's just really strong push. Troll in the mid lane, very strong. Clockwork had the best possible time. You got to wonder if that that lucky or unlucky, I should say, uh, series of events for Black could have changed the game. It very well could have. But uh, I, I don't know. I think the safe lane was just still very, very strong for Nip. Um, this this Luna combo with the Chen and the, and the Witch Doctor. It, it just did, Bristleback couldn't get anything, absolutely anything at all. Very nicely played by Nip. Yeah, you not not accustomed to seeing a Bristleback get shut down that hard. And, and it's also been a while since I've seen a, a Luna do very well in a game. But then again, in IP, they seem to have found their rhythm here with the second game. They played very well, very solid draft, which we talked about ad nauseum. And uh, with that, we will end the broadcast for today. Very quick games all around. I'm sure Pimp can attest. I'd like to thank everyone who joined me and all of you guys watching in chat. Thank you so much for supporting us. If you'd like to support us even further, um, of course, we talk about the compendium, the ticket, in-game, $9.99. If you want to support the in-game, out-of-game, if you'd like to support the Twitch broadcast, and uh, as well as the tournament itself, um, there is, of course, the Twitch Season Pass which benefits us at High Ground TV, as well as, of course, the prize pool. Go ahead and check that out. It's a one-time purchase. It's not a monthly thing, not like a subscription. So uh, definitely something to look into, maybe and invest in as well. With that being said, more information about the tournament can be found at DotaPit.com, Twitter.com uh, slash DotaPit. For us here at High Ground TV, you can check us out at PitMuckle, Pit, Pit, Pit our production manager. You can check me out at Dota, of course. Thank you so much to Quantum for joining us for stats today. You can check them out at Quantum underscore stats. Um, F World did the earlier games. You can check them out at F World Dota. And then, of course, Trouth, who you can check out at Trouth Dota as well. Uh, with all of that being said, guys, we'll be back tomorrow bright and early. I believe it is a, uh, I think it is a 16 CET game. I could be incorrect about that. 
Uh, hold that thought as I will check the, the website and I'll check the schedule. Uh, but we do have two games tomorrow as well, I believe. Two pretty big games. Alliance versus Mayan Sandy to start out at 16.30 CET, followed by Hellraisers versus uh, Vegas Squadron at 19.30 CET. So a couple of good games uh, in Group B just to determine who actually keeps on going and who, of course, uh, maybe is actually eliminated. We'll have to wait and see how things turn out. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for all of us here at Dota Pit. Good night, everybody. G2A.com, the best video game store ever! Fast as lightning! Solid as a rock! Cheap as duck! What's more, you can sell on it because it's also a marketplace! Remember G2A.com, the best video game store ever! I feel you. I want, <laughs> I want them going in. I want them running at each other. Yeah. But... Uh, it's like it's like watching. Uh, have you ever watched Australian rugby? Yes. Uh, or I don't know if it's called Australian football or whatever. Oh, Limp is gonna get destroyed. Those, those frost arrows slow him to a halt, and then the earth spike comes out, pops him up into the air. Black gets the first blood, and that's the run at you I'm looking for, and that's from a dragon without them even needing to get a ton of kills at this point. Jeez, the net worth is 7,200 for SF. This is massive. And I mean, how do you stop him? Bruta is going Midas, so she could try to man fight, but again, Yule's Requiem, again, you don't want to fight into that. And there could be TP rotation. They have to, they would have to dedicate a lot of resources and time to kill him. But uh, no, top lane, Hanskin. Finger, cool spray. Wow. Actually, get the kill with soul assumption. Now, arrow walking in. Pylai die. He's in a world of hurt. He's going to fall. <clears throat> and they will deny the tower. So that's what they needed to die. Yeah, but they did a good job. Limp did a good job about keeping him on that cliff there, but also <laughs> keeping his distance, too, because even though he went on him, he could still die. Black, we'll see if Eric can do something here. No initiation. Black is wow. going to fall. And. Bulba runs in, but now here comes Koifa as well. Limp and the rest of NIP getting low. It is a two for one. Eric can run away. There is the blotting light. Black does buy back. Hanskin now on the cliff gets Requiem, but there were not really any souls up for Koifa. Now he's got them. Jonas and fan's going to walk back in. Koifa knows he can blink, but he actually gets hit up. And now Jonas and fan getting stunned up by the Centaur. No detection. Turns into a three for four. And actually Tinker Black coming through from black and it is a two for one they do get a big target that bounty coming out for the uh, sf gives about a 500 gold swing to visage and 250 gold to the bat rider and they will not complete roach they're waiting as broodmother is nearby black is huge though man oh my god mass command is yasha and 1200 so we'll see if Brood has any items coming his way. He went for the Midas, which is kind of the standard thing. Uh, Koifa has a blink also, by the way. I don't know yeah. when that happened, but... Right before that fight. Oh my god. Yeah, but they did a good job. Limp did a good job about keeping him on that cliff there, but also <laughs> keeping his distance too, because even though he went on him, he could still die. Black, we'll see if Eric can do something here. No initiation. Black is wow. going to fall, and... 
Bulba runs in, but now here comes Koifa as well. Limp and the rest of NIP getting low. It is a two for one. Eric can run away. There is the blotting light. Black does buy back. Hanskin now on the cliff gets Requiem, but there were not really any souls up for Koifa. Now he's got them. Jonas the fan's gonna walk back in. Koifa knows he can blink, but he actually gets it up. And now Jonas the fan getting stunned up by the centaur. No detection. Turns into a three for four. And actually Tinker Black. Buys back. Jonas and Fon. Jonas some fan actually doing a lot of work. Buyback from the Lycan now, but this this Roshan is falling so quick. But here come the wolves and the spiderlings. Black now has to be careful. They've got to get this Rosh. Will they pick it up in time? Yes, no snatch either. Jonas and fan getting chased down, getting right click. Insatiable hungers pop. They get the kill. Black now ages up, but he will get dragged out of the high ground and he doesn't have a TP. No force staff to help either. Black is going to be stuck for some period of time and might actually just be dead as well. Magic Missile is going to go. And they put a lot of emphasis on this Roche, only to lose Black three times. One buyback, and then he gets the Aegis and dies again. Still, I thought uh... Scotty would have been great, but. Limp is getting ready to go. Roshan's falling quick. They're gonna find the lasso on to Black. Can they kill Roshan? They can. They get the age. His finger comes out. Black's dead. He's got buyback, but now they've got to fight without Black, at least for the time being. Crimson Yard pop, highlight eyes low. Requiem goes. Seal Kid's dead. Air pops the BKB. The man fight now beginning. Yonasop fan going to work. He pops his own BKB. And the race is going to work. There's the Aegis. Yonas and Finn going to try to get back up to the high ground. Gets stuck. They have a sentry. They barely don't have detection. Gets forced up. Hanskin's going to go down. Turns into a two for two. Actually, a three for two if you included the Aegis. The buyback came out from Black. He got into the fray. He did some work, but already getting pretty low again. And uh, Team Tinker still get Roshan, though. And they use a couple of BKB charges coming out from NIP, who tried to man fight their, their way through and aren't for legs why you gotta be okay okay the fight's gonna break oh. out now boba pops the crimson guard only on to him last was gonna go but limp taking so much earth spike misses yonas and fan going to work you cannot man fight quickba that swap saves his life only momentarily hanskin going down requiem getting channeled seal kid gets blown up as well three dead they're chasing after era gets body blocked and actually quickba didn't have yules he sold it for a satanic which he used